I asked, why me? I asked all the questions. I cried. I whatever I did. I went through the full range of emotions. All right. But I said, it's not going to win. It's not going to win. The time is now. Welcome to the Time Is Now podcast. Thank God, my friends, we could be here together. I'm Dr. Slava Shut. I'm a doctor of physical therapy, CEO, and the host of this show. We talk to entrepreneurs in all walks of life to find out what makes them tick, how they became successful, and everything about them to help you be a better entrepreneur. So, my intro to my wonderful, amazing guest, Julia Langley, a Cirque du Soleil singer, motivational speaker, and the one of the authors of the best-selling book called To Speak, Lead, and Impact. Let's get into it. I'm ready. <laughs> Thank uh, you so much for having me today. This is exciting. So first of all, I want to start off by saying, you know, I want you to introduce yourself, but like okay. everybody, I mean, everybody wants to know. How on earth did you get together with Cirque du Soleil? You know, <laughs> you know, it's so it's so interesting. They they may not they, they may not remember my name is Julia, but they always know that I worked for Cirque because Cirque has a certain mystique to it. You know, it's athletic, it's theatrical, it's creative. It has all of the elements of variety and entertainment, and then you get just lost sensory overload. I like to say, um, it my my particular journey has been an interesting one in the sense that I've always been a singer since I was two. I started singing. That was my first debut on stage and um, at the age of two. As I grew in my performance skills, I going from the next level to the next level to the next level. And eventually, you know, I, ha I have big dreams. I still have big dreams. I think that we never stop dreaming. And at that point in my life, I just went to see a Cirque show at downtown Disney in Florida, where I was living. Um, and, and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I said, I want to work for them. <laughs> so <laughs> I was doing, it was, it was just that, okay, this is what I want to do, you know? And I didn't know how I was going to do it. I didn't know even where to start, but I was a professional singer at the time. And what I was doing was working regionally and I had my own show. I had a one woman show and I would be booked and go and do a 45 minute, one hour cabaret style show industri or industrial style corporate style show. And people would just buy my show and I would entertain. So um, I loved it. I get to be myself. I got to do the material I want to do and really connect with my audience. But this just, mm, when I went and saw Cirque, it just grabbed me, you know, and I'm like, this is the most creative thing ever. So I saw an ad that said, hey, we're going to be here. And I said, well, I'm going to go audition. And, and the rest is history. I, I won, I won the audition and I made the tour and that was 18 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So, so you're a veteran of Cirque du Soleil. Oh, yes, absolutely. You know, yes. What show and what particular of the show like inspired you the most? Like it wasn't the, the opening scene. It wasn't most likely like, I mean, there's got to be something that grabbed you and which show was it? Well, uh, honestly, the first the first one moved me really because that was the first time I'd ever experienced anything like that, and that was La Nube at Downtown Disney. That was what was running. It was more of an urban style show. The music had heavy beats too. It was just really great, and I was enthralled. And at that point, I went and I, I bought every CD that Cirque du Soleil had. So I bought all of the CDs to every show. And I may not have seen the show, but I knew the music inside and out. So probably La Nuba and Alegria was another one and because I could really relate the style that they had for the singer. I very much was a, a similar in style. So Great song, um, by the way. Alegria. Uh, oh, I, yeah. My wife has um, that. It comes on once in a while. Like she's got like a thousand and songs or whatever, 10,000 songs. I don't know. And then uh, I, I remember hearing that song. And I was like, wow, that must fit really well with some great performance because that song is just pretty amazing. 
It is, it is amazing. All the music is amazing. And honestly, but there are some that are my favorites and that happens to be one of the favorites. I think of all of the shows is the song, the opening, the opening song for Alegria. And, and it, it, it's just so artistic. It's a marrying of athleticism and art artistry. And they were just really able to put that together so well. And I, I really love that. I call it theater for her guys who don't like theater. So <laughs> see any, one that's like, oh, I'm not into musical theater. I'm like, you have to go see Cirque. You know, it's going to change your whole perspective on what theater is and the arts and entertainment industry. So, you know, you're going to have a whole new view of the world. And it's it's true. Still changing people to this day. It's incredible because this, you know, a very entrepreneurial show and you're an entrepreneur in many respects and you're part of something that's what I would say magnificent. And I'll tell you why. You know, Cirque du Soleil is the Kleenex of that feel. Like when people think of like, there's no other tissue on the planet, right? There's only Kleenex. Well, I mean, there's other brands, but everybody thinks of Kleenex, right? Right. People think of shows, spectacular, music, variety. There's so much going on. It's so much to your senses. Cirque du Soleil has captured the name Cirque Entertainment Show. They have mastered that brand. And I think anybody who has mastered their brand like that is incredible. And well, they are. They're, yeah. they're synonymous for that style of show. And what's funny is that when you actually talk to people about Cirque and you start talking about some of the performers, that are, they're historically circus performers. And they go back generations and generations in Europe, uh, European families, uh, Italian and Mexican families, all these different families a hundred years and they're like but Cirque is theatrical and you're like wait it really does have its roots in old Barnum and Bailey circus that old style circus so the roots came from that but they were just able to make it something modern and contemporary that really drew in modern audiences and they are now one of the biggest entertainment companies in the world they own not only their own shows but they own um, a lot of other companies that actually work under the umbrella um, and it's still considered Considered Cirque du Soleil, but they own it, it. Really, they just sweep the whole field when it comes to entertainment, and and they're they're the masters for sure. Besides acrobatics and the circus type performance, we're talking about costumes you've never seen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> themes, the like the themes are incredible. How you go start to finish their dreams, their yeah. their performance. The costumes, the music, the the acrobatics, you know, you put it all together, it becomes thematic and spectacular. It's not, I've never seen a plain Cirque show. I've never seen a Cirque show that is one dimensional. There, there's so much going on in some of these shows. You're like, I don't know where to look. I mean, uh, over there, this guy's doing this. They're doing that over there. These guys are hanging from the ceiling. This one's, I mean, I don't, you know, like, (laughs) wow. It's like. You don't know what to look at. That's what I call it. Sensory overload. It really is sensory overload. You don't, you don't, you don't know which way to look first. I mean, there's something everywhere. So it just, it enlightens the senses, the ear, the the ears, the seeing that you almost can taste it. Like it's just a whole experience in itself. And it's it's amazing. It's not only amazing to work for them, but amazing to watch too. So I still love, although now I go and I even when I go to Broadway or I go to different places, I I have the entertainer's eye now. So I'm looking, it's my friends are like, I don't want to go with you to the theater (laughs) because I'm looking at it. I, what I'm sorry. What's You're a theater snob now. Yeah. Well, I'm looking for different things. You know, I'm not just sitting there purely for entertainment. It's very. Right. <laughs> it's they very kind hard. of ruined it for you. You like, like you saw the top dog, so now everything else is like, all right, this is a little bit of slow motion. Like, yeah, have you ever seen There's like a little bit of that? Like a, yeah. a, a movie from the '80s that was supposed to be like, like science fiction. You're like, wow, this is. <laughs> I could see the lines. I could see like, it's like. What, what happened right. here? How, what were you guys thinking? A <laughs> little like, bit cringeworthy for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I do. And I, I have that critical eye and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, and I, you know, and I watch performers, I'm like, ah, toes aren't pointed, you know, and I catch myself, just sit back and enjoy the show. Just, just 
relax, you know. <laughs> but that's I think idea. that that's just, I mean, actually, and it's really interesting because that's what plays into really a lot of what I'm doing now because um, I did have a little shift. I had um, a, a really um, horrific accident in 2019. It did, um, it did have an impact on me because it hurt. I, I was riding my bicycle in South Florida and crossing an intersection. I got hit by a Jeep, just broadsided. She ran out over me and I went out in the street. And so you can imagine, I had five broken bones. Um, I had a head, double uh, head trauma. I had a spinal cord injury. And, and then I got diagnosed with PTSD. I am that, you know, when you see a Jeep bearing down on you, you know, it's a difficult um, a difficult really thing to get out of your mind. But so it did uh, set me back a little bit. And then we went from there right into the pandemic. So every entertainment organization in this country ceased to be operate at all. So I, I went from convalescence to a pandemic where, you know, I'm getting my letter in the mail from Cirque where everyone in the entire company has been laid off and, you know, no one has a job <laughs> anymore. I'm not the only one. This had far reaching to, to everyone in a lot of different, um, a lot of different fields of work, but certainly I felt the pain as entertainers and a lot of my friends were entertainers. I had already been working for them for 18 years at that time. And I knew that I wanted to grow in my career. And so one of the things that um, I was doing when I wasn't touring was actually coaching. And I was working with people who wanted to get up on stage, whether that be an entrepreneur, a speaker, um, or a performer who wanted to level up, but was really faced with anxiety or nervousness. You know, they, they really, it, they would, they just were putting their best foot forward and they couldn't figure out what they were doing wrong. And so these are the kind of the, the kind of people that I, I've been working with. And that period of time, although very difficult, I had four surgeries after that, um, shoulder, neck, hip, and literally I had six weeks ago, knee surgery. That was the fourth one, six weeks ago, <laughs> but, um, four surgeries, you know, um, I, it gave me time to really think about all of my experience with Cirque in entertainment since I was two years old and what I wanted to do and how I could use that and step into the next phase of my life and help other people who want to experience a journey of, of stepping into their full potential. And there are so many people out there that I see, I work with them. I've worked with them where they say to me, I I don't think I can't do. And I'm like, you absolutely can. It's like I said, I want to work for them. Right. I, I want to do it. Now, how, how, how do I go about making that happen? And um, it, you know, it, it starts with that confidence and we have to get it from somewhere. And sometimes you need somebody to help you find it, you know, sometimes. but it's not only the confidence you went and did it. You have to take action. That's right. Dreaming big is good. There's, but it only remains a dream until you set action into place. So without action, dreams are just dreams. That's action right. are what make things happen. Your habits, your daily movements, 1% better every day accumulates more and more and more. Like droplets create big lakes and oceans and rivers, you know, action. And if you didn't step foot into that audition and then gave it everything you had and not, not that I'm here. Okay. You went and you brought it, you brought your talents and everything in it. And you gave probably a performance of a lifetime and here you are 18 years or 20 years now later. And you know, you're still rocking the house all because you dreamed, you said it, you did it. That's right. And, and I want to add something in there. You, uh, persevere, persevere too. That word is so important because it's attached to resilience. Okay. And, and it is not easy. What we're talking about doing, I don't want to say you can, you know, oh, just step out, just go do it. Just go do it. You know, it is, it requires grace with others, grace with yourself. It requires a grit sometimes that you don't know where you're going to get it from. All right. It requires taking yourself out of bed when you 
don't want to take the pillow off the top of your head sometimes. But taking that tiny, tiny step, and if you do, like you said, 1% every day, if you do those 1% every day, eventually they add up and eventually you can make a big step into the next level for you. And let me let me say this. I, I always love to tell this particular story because when I first started, I've always been a singer, but when I first got into um, really booking and having agents and learning the ropes there, I can remember I didn't have, I had a show that I'd put together, you know, but I had not performed it out because I didn't have the chance. So it was like, what comes first, the performance or the video? What do you do? You know? So I had an agent that was like, I'm willing to give you a shot. I need a video. And so I sent a video in. It was me singing the Star Spangled Banner. <laughs> okay. You know, I look back on that. And, and since then, that agent and I had a whole conversation about it. And he laughed about it. And I did, too, that someone actually gave me a job based on me singing the Star Spangled Banner. But what I'm trying to say about that is I didn't have a big, fancy video. I didn't have a video of my show, period. <laughs> All I had was some raw footage of me at a charity event singing the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem. I had it on video and I sent it in. I said, give me a chance. I'll make, I'll, I'll do you right. I will make your clients happy. They gave me a chance. My first show, I got a standing ovation and the rest was history. See, that's what I'm talking about. We're talking about perseverance. You know, we talk about this in the show all the time, that grit, the determination, the perseverance. You had setback after setback no fault of your own. You didn't ask for it. You were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then a world pandemic hit after that accident. You know, you still hung in there and you still. And, and let me tell you this too. What uh, I'm, I don't mean to cut you off, but you're talking about perse perseverance. Um, after the pandemic hit, we're coming out of 2020. We're going to, to 2021, right? Um, I'm thinking new year. Okay, okay. My father died in February, he passed away. And then one month, one month after my father passed away, my mother and my family home and my mother's home was hit by an F3 tornado and destroyed. I was in the house. Great, this is three years of my life where I thought, I don't know what I've done. I don't, I asked, why me? I asked all the questions. I cried. I whatever I did. I went through the full range of emotions. All right. But I said, it's not going to win. It's not going to win. I've been given talents. I've been given the brains to go out and do this and to make this happen. Now pick yourself up and go and go step, step, one step at a time. So I wanted to let you know, it didn't just end with the pandemic for me. It kept going and it kept coming like waves, like waves of torture. <laughs> but once you get, once you decide that you're not going to stay in that place, you have to make that decision. And then you move forward and you move through it. And I can tell you, I'm way on the other side of that. And um, exactly. It's beautiful. So yeah. you made a decision. You found your identity. I, well, my coaching program, we talk about this all the time. You have to make a decision. Who do you want to be? That's the right. The person you want to be. The quitter or the one that moves forward? No one's telling you to look past the very thing that happened. But despite it, you move forward. It's not going away. It's part of your past. It's part of something happened. You can't change it. No can do is use it and fuel and move forward with everything that happened, the challenges. Why? Only one entity knows, but that's not our business. Our business is to keep moving forward to the promised land. That's it. You, you are so right. And you know, quite often the way, the way I approach this is that I look at it like this was part of my journey because if I don't make that journey, what when I went through, then I'm not going to get to the place that I need to be and where I am today. So I had to go through those challenges and find my strength through those challenges to get 
to where I am today. And it, I grew, I changed, I learned, I dropped some things off behind, I picked up some new things and I kept moving forward with a lot of faith, a lot of prayers and moving forward. And here I am. And I, I listen, <laughs> the sky's the limit. You're talking to somebody that whatever, what's next, you know, what's next? Life excites me. I love getting up every day and I love working with my clients. I love talking to people about being a champion and what it takes to be a champion and, and getting up on that stage and being who you were made to be, yeah. stepping out and learning how to use your voice, communicate and getting up there, speaking, getting up there, sharing your story with others. Because if you're not doing that, then there's people that you're missing out there that are not getting help by you and what you're doing. Right. So your friends call you the graceful warrior, right? <laughs> yes. So, you know, you, you are the, the, as they say, the queen of bounce back. All right. Oh yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so, What would you say to somebody right now listening that has go is like in, in that moment, in, that period where they're having a hard time, they're going through the challenges. They're like saying the why me, how do I move on when right now all I want to do is cry, crawl in a ball and go under my bed, not in my bed. That, I, I, you know what, I, that's such a hard place to be because it requires so much inner strength to do that. And there are days when we all have that we don't feel like we have the strength to do it. But what I know to be the truth and what the, the main thing that helped pull me through, and I would sit down and write. I'm a big, I like to write things out because then I can read them. And sometimes I go back and read things I write and I think, oh, where was my head when I wrote that? Doesn't matter. Got it out. Got it on paper. But the thing that I think that's so important about the writing is that we acknowledge what um, we, we are grateful and we acknowledge the wins that we've had in our life. And they may be a win from last year. It might be a win from last week. It doesn't matter. And it might be that you actually got to got to your meeting on time. That might be your win. Your win might be I baked a cake. Yesterday, it was really, really the best thing in the world. The wins don't have to be, I went to work for, you know, a national conglomerate, or I got to go to Europe. Those aren't the wins I'm talking about. I'm talking about the little tiny things. I got up this morning, the sun was shining. It was 73 degrees outside. I sat the wind lightly blowing on me and I could hear the birds singing. I'm so grateful for that moment. And, and, and when you start finding those tiny things in your life that are good, you start to realize that all that those things that are shadowing start to take a step back and they'll start to balance themselves out a little bit. And you're going to have those days that they creep in and your, your brain is going to have to be a little stronger on those days. But the gratitude, writing it down and celebrating successes, that was a game changer for me. How about even a smile at a stranger? How about right. all open for somebody? Those, those nice things are gone. Rarely do anybody practice chivalry or it's kindness. True. Like we're so in our own bubble. What's next on Facebook? I want all these likes. How about... Open the door for somebody next time. How about a smile and a hi and a good morning to somebody? That's a big win. You know? Well, how about going and liking something someone else did on Facebook instead of worrying about them liking you? You like them. You smile at them. You know, I noticed something, um, I, and this was a little experiment. I always wondered, you know, when I go out on those days, it seems like everyone's cutting you off and everyone's being rude at the grocery store, what I'm carrying on my face that makes that happen. And then there are those days that I walk in and everyone's like, hi, how can I help you? Or everyone's, oh, here, go first or here. And you're like, 
I always ask that question. Is there something that I'm giving off in my own persona that is drawing that reaction from other people? So if you smile and you've always got that smile on your face, it's infectious, all right? People want to be around that positivity, even when they're grumpy, even when they're grumpy. They may not admit it, but they do. <laughs> I love your tools. You know, you you seem like a hands-on person using the tools that you have. You you wrote a book, right? And yes. you called it Call to Speak, Lead and Impact. So congratulations. Thank you. Take us through the process of putting your thoughts to paper and like the actual book, not just the notes that you keep, you know, for the daily journal, but, you know, writing a book, people don't know. It, it's, it's not easy putting an entire book together. Can you That's take... Right. A little bit through the process of how you wrote this incredible book. Absolutely, and I'm gonna I'm gonna gloat just a minute here. I, it, this was a collaborative project. Um, I did write with some other authors as well, but we are number one bestseller in twelve different categories. So we got yeah. I'm so I'm super super excited about that, and um, in public speaking uh, too. Number one in public speaking, which of course is my field, but. Putting the book together, it was, it was very, very interesting because I am a writer and I have other books that I'm going to be following up with. One about the circus. <laughs> You'll have to keep your eye out for that. What about the circus? But this is a business book that we wrote. And a lot of the, um, the chapters in there do talk about very similar things that we're talking about, those tools that we need in life to really get us through the challenges and to the next step. And you can see real life stories about that. As far as writing for me, I like to get my ideas out. And I have a writing program that I use, fortunately. So I'm able to write and then I can move stuff around. So I'm not one of those people that will write start to finish I'll write and I'll be like, oh, I have a great idea. And I'll go down here and I'll write and write. And so then I start to form get the formula and start putting it in place. So the flow works, uh, you know, as I'm going through it. And then what with the outline that I almost write the outline afterwards, because I know the goals of what I want to do. I know the opening, I know the ending, but I don't know the flow often. And that's what's really hard about writing is, and can you imagine writing way back in the day when we didn't have technology and you didn't have a way to move this stuff around? <laughs> Did you just have to rewrite it over and over again? Beautiful mind. It was like, it would, it'd be everywhere. Like, I, I don't know. I can't even imagine. Uh, I'm glad I never had to go through that. So I'm glad I'm in modern technology to put out my thoughts and amazing people kind of put everything together for me. Cause you know, right. my brain is like, I got files open everywhere in my brain, you know? So that's, that's amazing. The technology could help you like that. Well, it really does. And it, it it's good for me because like I said, you know, I'm here, 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 here and here. But then I start to see where the, the patterns I look for the patterns. I start to get the flow going in it. And then I use my software to move and, and to get and to get the flow, the the, re, the relating to answer the questions that I want answered and to meet the goals of what I want to accomplish in my writing. So it's all. And here's here's a tip. Here's a tip. Go to the end first. Write your end. Know what you want. Know what the point is. And then so there's a, big, there's a big writer's tip for you. Yeah. Ending and then reverse engineer everything leading up to it. I love it. I'm a it. big believer. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I mean, we use that in our everyday lives. Why wouldn't you use it to write your book? Know where you want it to go and then work backwards from there. Beautiful. Yeah. So on your website, it's... it's it says that you can be booked for performances and things like that. What is the weirdest and coolest place or performance you've ever had? There are several, but one of the most heartfelt um, ones, and it was blew me away, was I performed on Pearl Harbor Navy base in Hawaii in an air hangar. Wow. And yeah, they were expecting something like 5,000 people, maybe not even something like 15,000 people showed up for this thing. 
And they had all of the doors open. It was on a January night in Hawaii. It was magical. I walked out on the electricity. You just feel the, the you're standing on stage and you just feel the electricity of the crowd and they're giving you so much and you're giving them so much. It's just, that was hands down, probably my favorite performance ever of all time. Wow. Yeah, it was it was just simply amazing. And it was for American service men and women. And so uh, the most appreciative audience I think I've ever performed for the, you know, bringing entertainment to them when they're so far away from home and their families. And it, it was just a wonderful experience. That is truly amazing and sounds electric. It was. What would you say to somebody that has as most people do, stage fright, getting up public speaking. Can you give us a tip or two about how does one overcome public speaking? Absolutely. Um, this is something that I talk about, and I'm actually going to have a masterclass on December 6th on this very topic, overcoming nervousness. So you can get those paydays, get those top tier clients that you want when you get up there and you speak. So let me give you just a couple of things to touch on a couple of things here. One of the first things that I like to tell people to do is that you have to spend time beforehand visualizing. Visualizing. What do you do when you visualize? You visualize the end. We're just talking about going to the end. Visualize the outcome that you want and then work your way backwards. All right. You want them standing up? All right. That's what you're going to visualize. Yes. You want these people leaning in saying, I want to buy from you. I want to be your client. All right. That's what you start with. You visualize it because if you're standing up there and you're visual or beforehand and you're visualizing yourself being nervous and you're visualizing yourself being meek and scared, you're going to be meek and scared. You are going to put out on stage what you do beforehand. That's exactly the truth. So you have to think about positive endings. That's one thing. And I'll give you another little tip here. Laugh at yourself and the circumstances a lot. You've seen that, uh, what is, there's a, there's a commercial where Mayhem, you know, the guy, he's, he's named Mayhem and he falls out of the sky and he's like, Mayhem's here. Yeah, because things happen. Mayhem happens all the time, especially when you're on stage. The internet goes out. The sound goes out. Um, I've had a wig fall off. I've had dresses come undone. I got hit by an emu one time and somebody dropped a trapeze flyer on my head one time. Okay, I could go on. And, oh, one time I got my hair attached to a tree <laughs> and the tree, I was walking and this nine foot tree was attached and it was rolling behind me. It was really quite funny. You were pulling a tree with your hair? I was. Well, I had a headpiece on that stuck up to like, you know, about, I don't know, eight inches above my head. And I was standing at the end and I was like, we were doing, it was the very end, right? And I'm doing this, the violinist is playing and I'm doing my thing and whatever. And it got attached and the, the leaf was wire and it got wrapped around my headpiece. And... <laughs> So I, I was trying to get it out. It wouldn't come undone. See, that's what, why you're the graceful warrior. <laughs> yeah, it would not come undone. So the violinist is like playing and he sees what's going on, right? And um, and so we go to go off stage and I'm like looking at him like, I can't, I can't get undone. Like I've got this tree attached to my head. <laughs> and he leans down. He's like, you have a tree following you. And literally... I was walking, my head was like this and this tree, and it was like nine feet tall, it was huge. And it was, it was rolling behind me. Then the tree completely falls over on stage. Yeah, so the violinist had to get my hair undone. <laughs> and what do they say? The show must go on? 
We were at this point, we're laughing so hard. We're just trying to keep our composure because I just pulled the tree off stage with my headpiece, you know. So my point in all that is you cannot, you cannot either freeze or you can't crumble. You just can't. Like you, you have to look at this stuff like you so that's how it's gonna go. That's that's how it's gonna go today. All right, all right, okay. <laughs> you just move through it. <laughs> so this was the end, and that's how the cookie crumbles. That's it. That's right. It is what it is. You could only do what you can do. That's it. You're you're human. To, yeah. You know, giving yourself that grace and understanding. But listen, you, you can't take it too seriously. Like I, I, you know, people that really hold on really tight sometimes can find themselves in a in a situation of stress. You have to you have to breathe into it a little bit. And those are the two of the biggest tips as far. I mean, I have lots of others and there are a lot of other things that I, when I work with clients one-on-one, -on -one, I, that we discuss and, you know, build up their muscle, so to speak, to stand up on that stage and, and own it and talk to those people out there that need their help, get those top tier clients, you know, that's, and the thing is, here's the thing is that when you go and you're given a, and you're in a room, let's say you're in a room with 50 people and 10 of those people could be your clients, but you give a hmm, presentation. All right. If those clients were high ticket clients at 10 grand a piece, you're looking at a hundred thousand dollar problem you got on your hands. Big time. Okay. So we're not just talking about standing ovations. We're talking about leaving money on the table too. Right. That's, and that's, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of uh, issues. And, you know, nobody wants to go through that. No. And let's say you do it 10 times, then you got a million dollar problem on your hands. See, yeah. people don't put those dollar signs to it either. So you've got impact. You're not reaching the people. you got your clients that you're not getting. You're missing your audience completely. You're standing up there pouring your heart out, not getting the reaction that you want out of people. That's disheartening. And it's a confidence killer. Yeah. So these are. You have to bring it. You have to bring right. it. And I'm glad, you know, that I could be there. Uh, you know, I, I'm glad I have those two tools uh, ready for me because I'm always visualizing that. And like, I'm here for one purpose and that's to make people's lives better. And if I already visualizing, oh, thank you. That's right. I can work backwards and figure out how I can make that impact on those people. If That's you right. perform in front of anybody in any venue, what would it be? If I could perform, oh. Any venue and any person, who would you like to perform for and where? Who? Uh, 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 uh. Okay, this is a this is a new question. I have never been asked this question before, and I have never really. Uh, so you got it's not often I'm at a loss for words, but right now I. <laughs> Hang on just a second. Let me really think about that. I have every performer would love to perform for maybe a legend or their mentor or somebody like that. I wish so and so was at my show. I wish I could perform for so and so. You know, like for a basketball player, like, like I would love to have played with Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would have loved to go one-on-one -on -one playing against or for Michael. Like, is there someone you would like to play for? And what venue would you be like, wow, I would really love to perform here? Well, I would love to perform at the Oscars. Oh. <laughs> that would be amazing. That would be amazing. Okay. I mean, that's a pinnacle. So, so really. Like at the Oscars and then in front of all these celebrities. I'd love it. I think it would be great. Yeah, I'd be nervous, but that would be amazing. Beautiful. Amazing. Visualize that end. Hey, you give me a new goal. Well, you know, and you and you know what? You do say that. There, this is something that uh, this is a very realistic goal, and it's not just performing a I, I do um, a very heartfelt show every year. It's a holiday show that I do at um, a, a, a theater in, in Western Georgia to raise money for scholarships for them. It has got Hallmark written all over it, upside down, backwards, all right? It's a small town. It's families. It's, 
It's sons and fathers singing together, mothers, daughters, they're coming together. We have a band, 20 singers, thousands of dollars of scholarship money to pay for thespians to go to college when they graduate. It's just, it's got all of the elements that Hallmark stands for and the family and it, that, that would be something that I would, I would think that wow, I, that's like the pinnacle of my career. If I could have a movie or a, do a reality type thing or a movie on the Hallmark Channel. And that, I have visualized the end already on that one. I don't know why I didn't come up that one first. Oscars, second to the Hallmark Channel. <laughs> I, I wish you the best of luck with that because, you know, you dream it, you make it, you're an action taker. I, I, I think... You're going to do it. I can't wait to see you on the Hallmark Channel, followed by the Oscars. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> we, we like to play a game with all our guests. And we come up with different games just to make things. Sometimes we get into deep topics and stuff like that. So we like to make things a little fun and light. So the game is called Would You Rather? And it's the stage edition. A pretty common game. For those of you who might not know, our guests will be given two options and have to choose the one they'd rather do. But we're putting a fun twist on this one and doing a version just for Julia. So let's get into it. Okay, now, I'm ready. All right. Would you rather have to perform with a live tiger or while being heckled by Simon Cowell? A live tiger. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any day. I love animals. Yeah, I'm in the circus. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I imagine that would be more comfortable for you than standing there giving a great speech on stage and someone like Simon Cowell is heckling you, telling you how awful you are. Yeah, that, that might be a little disheartening. The tiger, yeah, uh, yeah. I could see you being the warrior. You'll be fine with that one. Yeah, yeah, the tiger's fine. Yeah, I'd right. take I, I that. And, and Sam, Simon Cowell's fine too, but... I'd rather him just tell me not on stage. Just right. send me a message behind the curtain. <laughs> so here's number two. Would you rather perform on a cruise ship for the same crowd every single night or be the designated birthday singer at a Chili's? Cruise ship. At least you get to see different ports of call. <laughs> the crowd, yeah. the crowd might be different, but the ports of call are different. I love it. Yeah. I love I don't know if I want to sing at Chili's either, but, you know, it, it's all good. I mean, you know, they do great happy birthdays there, too. But you, it's a yeah, I'm a traveling girl, though. So it's the travel. It's the element of the travel on a cruise ship that would interest me. I think that that would be what my draw with that. The same crowd wouldn't bother you. No. Perfect. All right. So let's go. Number three. Would you rather perform for an amazing private client or in a stadium of thousands? A stadium of thousands. I agree. I a very easy thing. Yeah. I mean, if somebody paid me, I don't know, let's say a million dollars, it'd be great to give us one-on-one -on -one speech. I mean, it'd be cool. But like standing in front of thousands, inspiring thousands at once. I mean, that I, I agree with you there. That would be like just, you know, spectacular. And I'm going to be honest with you. And some people might disagree with me, but from where I have been in my journey, singing in front of thousands is way easier than singing in front of 10. See, in front of thousands, it, it's it's more anonymous, truthfully, as a performer. It's more anonymous. So. Well, I, got, I have a treat for you then. I know okay. you're prompt to, but I know the audience and I know the questions are going to come in because I know my audience and i'm not sure how many thousands are watching and listening and are going to send messages in but people are going to want a, you to sing a quick note to show us the goods i want to hear an impromptu like a, you don't have to give me the whole song i want to hear a bit of a song your favorite song whatever you want off the top of your head impromptu give us a little taste of those windpipes okay Give me just a second. Okay. Give me just a moment. Yeah. All right. Here. Can I stand or no? Is it too, maybe? You stand. You could skip. You could jump. You could do somersaults. You could do whatever you want, girl. 
Okay, here we go. Let's say it. Spirit, watch the heavens open, open. Spirit, oh, can you feel it call? There you go. <laughs> That's awesome. So, where else can we find you, Julia? Uh, you know. Plug yourself. How do people find you? I want people to knock down your doors and inundate you with business. So I would love that. I would love to set up calls with people. You guys call me and we'll talk about speaking, your roadmap to speaking. I What I'll do is I'll give you my Calendly link and that way people can just do that and we can have a chat. All right. That's, I love talking to new people, connecting with people and really listening to their stories and finding out what they're doing in their business and what's where they want to go with it. I enjoy that. So I'll give you my Calendly link. As far as social media goes, you can certainly find me on Facebook at Julia Langley. You can find me on I uh, Instagram. You can see in the window here, Cirque Singer Jewels. I'm on IG, uh, also LinkedIn as well. You can find me there. Um, so those are really the best places. And on my Facebook, I have some videos. I'm going to start doing my lives again on Monday nights. So, um, and that'll be seven o'clock Eastern. So I have to count it back. Uh, maybe I guess that's for Pacific where I will come on and I do about a 15 minute we talk about the topic of the day. It, sometimes I bring people on for five minutes or so and then I sing. So it's a 15 minute show I do on Monday nights. We'll start that up next week. Again, people can tune in and hear me sing as well there and, and write in people write in say hi. It's a live and it'll be streamed live on Instagram and Facebook as well. So you can catch me there in both places. That is amazing. I thank you so much for being with us. You've been incredible. We it's got fun. a free show. I mean, amazing. We got golden nuggets and tips of how to not have stage fright. So uh, we really, really appreciate you. Well, this has been a great, I, I love having conversations about it. And uh, and it's been, it's been fabulous talking to you. You're a great yeah. host. Fabulous. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So Your people are lucky to have you. <laughs> thank you. And thank you all for listening to Time Is Now podcast. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. If you're listening, make sure to rate us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Thank you for listening to Time Is Now with me, Dr. Slava Shut. It'll be posted every Friday, 2 p.m. Send in your questions to Dr. Slava Shut on Twitter. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you.